Hello and welcome to this devlog. In the last episode I got sidetracked making a complete ocean system, but today we finally focus on the actual gameplay prototype. Okay, maybe one last episode on technical stuff, but next time I work on the gameplay. As I explained in the first episode, the idea is that the player discovers a different map every game, which they have to explore to find their destination. Now to do that, I have two options. I can manually create an infinite amount of levels, or I can use procedural generation. The latter does have a pretty big advantage because it is physically possible, so I went with that. I also like the idea that Procedural generation, or pros gen, as the cool kids say, uh, sort of feels like discovering a world. Every level is unique, and when you play one for the first time, it sort of feels like you're exploring a whole new place that no one has ever seen. Also, if I decide to create a competitive mode, where you can compare your time with the other players, uh, it could be nice to have the choice between either playing a level that has already been played by some people, and you try to beat the score, or to be the first player to play a new level uh, and then to have other people try and beat yours. But I will talk more about gameplay at the end of the video. Now there are a ton of procedural generation options and tutorials out there, uh, each more advanced than the last, so I will link some of those uh, in the description. But I decided before going headfirst into complex mesh generation, to figure out some constraints that would help me come up with the best solution. The first one is that I wanted the system to be fairly easy to implement because I'm not the best coder out there and I don't want to waste weeks on complex problems. Uh, the second one is quite important. I wanted it to be easy to art direct because, you know, a lot of procedural generation systems are very generic. They all look the same and they really don't have any style or personality. And since the look of the game is going to be quite important, I really wanted to be able to control quite easily how it would look. As a bonus, I wanted to be able to leverage it to make some manual levels. So either for a tutorial or for maybe a short story mode, or even if I find the time and if it makes sense, uh, for some kind of player level editor. On top of that, I also had a pretty big advantage over most people who do terrain generation, which is I do not need to make a navigable mesh, since it is only here as an obstacle. As I said, there are a lot of solutions to that. You can just displace a terrain mesh with noise to make it look like mountains. You can use marching cubes uh, in order to generate more complex terrain with overhangs. You can use wave function collapse, in which you create different building blocks of your terrain, and then an algorithm will assemble it in a nice way. And then there's whatever black magic Oskar Stolberg is making, which I won't even attempt to imitate. The solution I chose is not as often discussed uh, as those I just mentioned, probably because it doesn't work in a lot of cases, and also it's not particularly clever or elegant, but it just fits all my constraints, so I figure, why not? Essentially, I simply generate a 2D map using multiple noises that I mix, and then I scatter a bunch of handmade terrain prefabs. It's a very brute force way of doing it, but you know, it works. To make the 2D map, I use the free tool mixture which allows me to create a simple graph, mixing multiple noises in order to get a custom map. I only use Berlin noise, and I find that using UV distortion, so using a noise to distort another noise's UVs, is a good way to avoid the typical Perlin look and to get interesting shapes. I can easily expose a seed value, which I change from a script, and then get a ton of different maps at runtime. To create the mesh terrain, I prototyped a technique using Blender geometry nodes 
and here is how it works. First, I scatter some points on a grid. Then I sample the map I just created using the points position. Depending on the value of the map, I remove some of the points. I randomize the scale, the rotation, the position, and I get something that starts to look like an archipelago. Then I simply spawn different cliff prefabs on those points, and this is what I get. This is still a very simple version for now, as I only use one cliff mesh, but I will do an art path later on, and that will allow me to create some more variation. Once I was happy with the results I got from Blender, I copied the whole system in C Sharp inside of Unity. All of the information used by the system is stored in a scriptable object. So the prefabs, the grid density, the randomness, etc. This allows me to easily swap biomes for different levels or even to mix them together. Once the terrain is generated, I spawn four more types of objects. Forests, landmarks, details and the ports. For forests, I spawn groups of trees scattered on a grid, just like the terrain meshes, um, and that creates little clumps of trees here and there. The landmarks are quite important uh, for the gameplay because there are very few of them and they appear on the map. So the player can use them to orient themselves. To spawn them, I simply get a random position based on their intended placement, which can be land, ocean or shore. Details are very similar to landmarks, um, except I spawn a bunch of them and also they don't appear on the map. Finally, when this is all done, I spawn six or seven ports, which for now are all based on the same prefab. Once again, all of the information is stored in scriptable objects, so I can very easily change the look of a level and create different biomes. That's essentially how I generate my levels. Um, there are two more things that I should talk about quickly. First is optimization. Of course, we don't want to have a ton of unique renderers like this. Um, so I just group together meshes that are near each other using the Unity Combine Meshes API. We are now 99% there, but there is one last thing. We have to make sure that every level we create is playable. Because with random generation, it's possible that a port will be in a place that the player cannot reach. In order to verify that, I use a simple BFS algorithm, which is the same as a flood field, which expands from the player and allows me to know every place where they can go. If the player cannot reach the port, I simply search for another random position until I find one that works. Finally, I also wanted to talk a bit about the gameplay because I got some interesting comments after the first video. A few of you felt like the idea of a time limit was a bit stressful and potentially going against the general chill vibe of the game. I definitely hear that and pretty much agree. One thing I do consider is adding some kind of competitive mode that I described a bit earlier in the video, where you simply know before starting a new game what the best time in this map is so far, and you can try to beat it. Regarding the two-player co-op mode, a couple of people suggested that looking at an old map for 10 minutes would not be fun, which I guess is true for some people. So the idea is of course that the player who has access to the map is not simply doing that and they actually have something else to do, uh, for which I have two main ideas. First of all, they could be doing some kind of maintenance on the ship, uh, where some kind of mini game or task would randomly pop up, like a leak or something is on fire or you have to repair something, and they have to finish it quickly to avoid sinking. This would force them to find a balance between looking at the map and handling the tasks, and I could increase the amount over time in order to make it harder and harder. On the other hand, uh, instead of tasks that are unrelated to the other player, 
they could actually be handling parts of the ship controls, like the steering or managing the sails. This would probably be a bit more chaotic, but I think it could be fun and I have to test it. Both solutions could also be combined, but I would love to hear what you all think. Alright, this is the end of the devlog. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.